Hi everyone, today's reading is Hebrews chapter 5. It's a chapter which finishes with a real challenge, a challenge to go deeper into God's Word, to not just read the Word, but to be trained in the Word and to be trained in grace and righteousness. In, in other words, to, to mature from seeing God's Word as simply a list of rules and regulations to mature into our true identity as God's righteous and holy people. We see ourselves as holy and therefore live according to that holiness, who we really are, our real identity. That's what I think maturity is. Now, the big theme of Hebrews, as I understand it, and I've said throughout these studies, is to help us to see how Jesus is superior, greater than anyone or anything else that has gone before. Um, Hebrews was, this letter was written to Jewish believers who were being pulled back into their old lifestyles, pulled back into their old covenant religious lives by the Jewish community around them in which they lived. So this letter was there to remind them and us that Jesus is better than all of that better than that old covenant religious way of living. And here today we've got this, this whole section about the high priests of the old covenant and how Jesus is a greater high priest than the high priests that have gone before. Fundamentally, a priest is a go-between, an intermediary, someone who stands between God and and man who represents humans to God, who intercedes for humans before God. In other words, Jesus is lifting you before the Father right now, saying, Father, have grace and mercy upon your child, your son, your daughter, because of the sacrifice that I have made for them, because I have made them holy. Jesus is living to intercede for you. And here we read that because Jesus, our high priest, became one of us, because he took on flesh and blood, because he became a human, because of that he was tested just as we are tested, because of that Jesus is able to sympathise with us. Jesus is able to be gentle with us. Isn't that amazing? You know, when you think about just how holy and pure and mighty and eternal and, and otherly God is to, to humans, well, how could such a God really know what it's like to be human? And yet Jesus became like us, as one of us. I think it was, the, I think it was Irenaeus, one of the early church fathers, that said, he became like us so that we could become like him. It's amazing, isn't it? Jesus, our high priest. So Jesus is the greatest high priest. And it goes on to say, not only was he called and appointed by God, as all high priests were called and appointed, but when Jesus was called, he wasn't simply called by a name as a servant, but he was called as a son. So Jesus is greater. And Jesus is a greater priest because when he was called to be a priest, he was called to be a priest forever. Now, each and every high priest was called just for a period of time, for a year. Jesus' priesthood is permanent. He lives forever to always intercede for us, to always present us before the Father as acceptable, to become the source of of eternal salvation, as we read in our passage. Now, now imagine that. Imagine being reminded of that truth as a first century Jewish believer reading this letter, the first audience. This was probably written at a time just after the temple was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. And the Jewish people were wondering, well, how would they ever bring animal sacrifices to God for the forgiveness of their sins. Now, the temple was destroyed for their atonement on the day of Yom Kippur. 
And, and these believers are being reminded, you don't need a priest. Jesus is your priest forever. You don't need a sacrifice. Jesus is your perfect sacrifice. You don't need a temple. You have become the temple where God's presence dwells. He goes on to say that Jesus is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Now, one of the reasons we need to dig deep into scripture is because these first Jews would have been so steeped in these scriptures that the, the writer of the Hebrews almost misses details out, it just assumes that we know them. And, and Melchizedek, it means the king of righteousness. He was a priest and a king before the uh, kingship was established by God with Saul and then David, before the priestly order was established with Aaron at the time of Moses. In other words, a king and a priest before kings and priests, an eternal king and priest. Um, Melchizedek approaches Abraham, uh, the father and founder of the Jewish faith, the greatest person in uh, Judaism, and the writer reminds us Jesus is a priest in that order. Now, uh, Abraham tithed to Melchizedek, demonstrating that Melchizedek was greater. And Melchizedek came to Abraham bearing gifts of bread and wine. And it just speaks of that sacrificial death of Christ that was to come. Jesus truly is our great high priest. Have a good, great day.